Hello, class. I thought that I would start us off today. I've already drawn that um, circuit that we have solved, right? It's really all that not com not that complicated of circuit. It um, you know it's just some things in series, a couple things in parallel that I put out at the end so that we could work this out. There's much more complicated circuits where we're going to have to use uh, various different types of analysis methods to find out what the currents and everything are. However, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at um, two things. Uh, we sort of looked at the uh, current division as we've done here, but I'm going to show you a simpler way to do that current division. And uh, I also want to look at applying uh, Kirchhoff's laws. Now, indirectly, we've already applied Kirchhoff's laws um, in some manner to get to the point that we've we've gotten here. But let's just look at what uh, you know Kirchhoff's laws are, are really saying. And so, the first one that we've more or less done is that if we were to sum all of the currents going into a node, those would equal zero, right? So that's the one, everything that's going into a node. So the two main nodes that we looked at here that we had to look at were this node and this node, right? And we determined that there was uh, current flowing in and then two pathways for current flowing out current flowing in from here, current flowing out here and here, and then current flowing in here, current flowing in here, and then current flowing out here, right? So we looked at those two nodes and that's the, the and, and that's only, and that is the only place that these are gonna really work because every other node is just one in, one out. Current coming in, current coming out. So we don't really have to worry about that. That's more or less the null case as far as Kirchhoff's laws go. But then we also have another one of Kirchhoff's laws that tells us that if I look at the voltage going around a loop, a closed loop in the circuit, that I'm going to have zero volts across that curved loop, that's um, that loop. Now, closed loop. Now. Let's just look at applying this to the uh, schematic that we've been working on, all right? Now, I've really applied that already, and we, we get one equation when we look at this, and that was that I equals I sub W plus I sub Z. And when we look at uh, I, we know I is there and I sub Z and I sub W. And if I add all of those together, they're going to um, come up to the same. So I have 102.8 uh, milliamps going in. And I then break that down into 54.8 milliamps I sub Z and 47.49 milliamps I sub W. All right, actually that should probably be 47.52. So it's about, it's a, you know, it's a little off or, or no, actually it, yeah, it's probably exactly right. <laughs> Cause I forgot it's not a, exactly a hundred, it's 102.8. Okay, so, so that was the first thing that we looked at and we used that uh, information in the solution of the problem, right? now. Let's look at this. Let's just look at this loop. Let's find a loop. And I'm going to say that this, we, we can look at both loops, but let's look at this loop right here, right? First, let's look at that loop and just sum up all of the voltage drops and the voltage increases as we uh, go around that loop. Well, the first one that we're going to have is going to be 10.28. So I've got minus 10.28 volts. All right, that's the first one. I'm just, I'm starting from this point right here and I'm going in a circular uh, motion, right? 
So the first drop that I have is going to be minus 10.28. The second drop that I have going from 89 to 72 is going to be 0 0.34 and 12.34. So minus 12.34. 4 volts. Let me just do that again in my head. 12.34. Uh, yep, I think I've got that right. Now, now let's keep going around the loop. Now we've got a voltage drop here too, don't we? 77.38 and 40.09. So I've got another voltage drop of 37.27 minus 37.27. 7 volts. So that's this voltage drop, the second voltage drop, the third voltage drop. Let's go to the fourth voltage drop that we've got right here, and that voltage drop is going to be 0 and 40.09 volts, so it's minus 40.09 volts. Now, when we go from the negative side of the DC power supply up to the positive side of the DC power supply, that's going to be a positive 100 volts because we're at zero volts here, we're at 100 volts here, so that's going to be plus 100 volts, right? Plus 100 volts. So we've gone all the way around that loop. So let's see if we come up to zero volts uh, like we uh, assumed that it was going to be, right? So I've got 10.28 plus 12.34 plus 37.27 plus 40.09. And that gives me 99.98. <laughs> so in actuality, <laughs> so I've got 0.0 two volts and and uh, that basically let's let's put let's just say that that is going to equal zero volts and of course that's just calculator error that we've carried through there we might have uh, one one hundredth or uh, here or one one hundredth there that it's off but in in actuality th those are going to 99.8 and then the hundred uh, and that ends up giving me um, zero volts. So just like uh, Kirchhoff's law for uh, currents being summed at a node equal to zero, we've got the same thing here where we sum uh, voltages around a loop and those also come to zero. Right? Does everybody see how we apply the two Kirchhoff's laws? I just had to have a sip there. Um, now, what I also want to do is I want to look at uh, current division. And we, we've set up a current divider. Uh, we've got two things here, and I want to, want to look at, I've already looked at bo both of these, you know, more or less indirectly, but I want to, to look at these uh, directly. If we have a voltage divider, how could I divide the voltages? So let's say that I had uh, uh, 100 volts up here and I ran it through right, a series of resistors. And what I'm really making here is a voltage divider, but I'm not gonna make one that, that divides it uh, by integer voltages. So I, I showed you how to do that the other day. But this one, let's say that I just put uh, this down here. Give me some um, resistances. Okay, well, let's say that this is 120 ohms, um, 220 ohms, uh, 330 ohms, uh, 470 ohms. I'm trying to use actual numbers so that you get used to the series of resistors that you know are laid out there. Uh, and then I'll put, uh, boy, I don't know. Let's put a 180 ohm here down at the bottom. And of course, this is going to be zero volts, and that's 100 volts. So at each point along there, what would the individual 
voltages be? Let's just draw some lines out there so that we can, you know, put the voltages that we would have. How would I do that? Very quickly, you know, because I'm, I'm saying this is a, a voltage divider. I think everybody can see what we would do is we would look at this 120, 220, 330, 470, 180, and, and we would just add those up because that's going to give us the total resistance in that voltage divider tree. So we call it a voltage divider tree. And, um, and that gives us, you know, the, the voltage drops across uh, each one of those. But first we have to find out what the current is that's going through there. And we, and we have to find out what the total resistance is. Pretty easy because we just add all of those together. So 120 and 220, that gives me 340. 340 and 330 gives me 670. 670 plus 470, that's 1,070 plus 70, or 1140, 1240, 1320. So our total amount of resistance that I've got there is 1320 ohms, right? And that's going to be the, the, the total. I'm just going to draw that there so everybody can see that the total resistance is 1320 ohms and i uh, so now i've got uh, my current that's flowing through there is just going to be 100 volts divided by 1320 ohms All right so the current is just a second 100 divided by 1320 gives me 75.75 milliamps. I'm going to write it in milliamps. 75.75 milliamps. Remember that we can't really use that, you know, in a calculation because milliamps is not the defined unit. It's amps that's the defined unit. So we'd have to use 75.75 times 10 to the minus 3 or use 0 0.075 seven five amps so that's the amperage that's going through there now let's see what the voltage drop is uh, uh, across any one of these because if i take that seven uh 75.75 milliamps or 0 0.07575 amps and i multiply it by 180 that's going to give me 13 point six four volts does everybody see that? And that's what I did it because we're starting at zero and that's gonna be a voltage drop. So if the voltage drop is 13.4 volts over the 180 ohm resistor, then uh, it's gotta drop 13.64 down to zero. So I know it has to be 13.64 there. You know, really to do the next one, can't we just take the 470 and the 180 and add those together? to get uh, 500, 650. So 650 uh, times 0 0.07575, I wanna mention that, you know, because that's what I'm, I'm using, I'm using amps, not milliamps. And that's going to give me 49.24. So 49.24. Volts. All right. Now we're doing the same thing 180, 470, 330. Let's add all of those together now. And that's going to give me uh, 8, 950, 980. So 980 times the 0 0.07575 